<laughs> um, of all the different voices that you do, which is the most fun, the most pleasurable to do, and which one is the most miserable, uncomfortable, I'd rather smash myself in the face with a hammer than ever have to do this voice again? Uh, well, I don't, uh, luckily, I don't feel like that about any of them. <laughs> but I think the way we, the Cyberman one, I think is a bit dull. But the Cybermen should be dull because they have no emotions. And that's your problem with Cybermen because logically they should speak with no, no intonation at all. But it is entertainment we're making. So I was struck, I really, we were just, uh, I was just chatting with my PA, Margaret. Big round of applause for Margaret, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're laughing that up, aren't you? Yeah. Um, just talking about Cyberman voices earlier, and uh, I thought you'd passed out. Sorry, I saw you just uh, out my peripheral vision. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, that weird way that they spoke, you know, uh, which I thought was fantastic because it, it avoided all emotional content, but was interesting and crazy to listen to. Um, and I really wanted them to do them like that for the new series, but Graham Harper again. <laughs> he said, no, no, they sound rubbish, those, don't they? I don't like those. Damn it. So, but, you know, that kind of delete, delete, which is all I'm doing, is that, that's not as challenging as perhaps it might be. I love to do the Daleks because they're such, you know, you can really let go and be... And people always have a reaction to the Daleks, especially in Britain, because it's such a cultural, you know... Uh, undercurrent. You know, when I did the first read-through for Chris Eccleston's first Dalek story, you know, when I just delivered, you've probably read interviews where I've said this, when I just delivered the first noises, let alone first lines, it just, I had my ring modulator and speaker there and everything, and it, and it just sort of, everyone went wild. And there's one actress, Anna Louise, I can't remember her name, very skinny girl, she was in it, she, you know, she played the assistant to the main guy, to Van Staten. And she had been uh, brought up uh, in a country, I can't remember exactly where, but she had, had, she had no idea of Doctor Who at all. And, and I remember, you know, rather egotistically, when everyone was going wild and cheering, and going, ah, it's a Dalek, it's a Dalek. I just looked around the room to just check everyone, and she was sitting there going... <laughs> it just, it meant nothing to her. And when they were filming it, the, the bit where it comes into Van Staten's office, you know, and it starts... Uh, threatening him. Do you remember that? Comes out the lift and, and threatens him, and she's in the background there. On the first take, she was just standing and looking at it, and the director just said, don't you think you, you should look scared? She, and she looked at it and said, what, of that? <laughs> and then he looked at her and said, it's been killing people! <laughs> and she went, oh, okay, okay, I got it now, I got it, you know. <laughs> so, and, I, and I like doing the jadoon because I can do that without an effect on my voice. I just, you know, <clears throat> just surprise people by suddenly talking like that, you know. And then they say, does that hurt your throat? And I say, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's my stupid fault for choosing it. Anyway, thank you. I liked your question. It's interesting. I know you've mentioned in the past how the difference between, like, American Who fans and um, British Who fans is Americans are very much tied to their doctor, while British seem to be very in love with the monsters. Well, that, that's the reason Doctor Who became popular in the UK, because of the monsters. You know, Doctor Who is still here because of the Daleks. I don't claim anything for that, because it wasn't me doing them then. Um, you know, and that's what really caught the British public's imagination. I don't know what that says about the British. Um, well, I noticed that when it got popular in America, certainly people, it's, it was all about the eccentricity of the Doctor. So, yeah, I don't know, I don't know why that is, and particularly Tom Baker because he had such a large personality and such a, I think such a, rec I mean, and Tom Baker is, you know, I've been working with him a lot on the Big Finish audience, bigfinish.com, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, that's, uh, we've got lots of, we've had a whole season of the, has anyone heard them with the Doctor and Leela, the season that's come out so far? That's not enough, here. go there, honestly. Brilliant, there's Daleks, there's everything, it's fantastic. Um, it, it, Tom is, uh, appears to be from another planet, you know, his mind operates on a, on a level which, does, which is completely alien to anyone else, which makes him the most amazing person to be around, actually. But that, coupled with his silhouette of the hat and the mm. scarf, very distinctive, I think somehow that caught... I think he is the reason that Doctor Who became popular outside of the UK, actually. 
because he's such a larger than life character. So does Baker still wear that when he's doing the voice? No, but uh, he does wear a long coat most of the time. He wears braces now. He, he invariably has uh, uh, bra brace, red braces and a pink shirt is invariably what he wears, pink or white. Bracers uh, mean like suspenders. Oh, yeah, sorry, suspenders are what ladies keep their stockings up with in the UK. <laughs> yeah, we call them braces, but yeah, you know what I mean, Sus suspenders. <laughs> that makes me chuckle like a schoolboy. <laughs> you said suspenders. <laughs> That's like saying brazier. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yes, I see, because pants means trousers here. It means, it means underwear in the UK. So there was a guy, uh, the, the, what was his name, the photograph chap, is he here, the, the bur who does the burlesque stuff? He said, you know, I, so I took my pants off in front of everyone. I thought, really? Okay, well, <laughs> okay, right, if, uh, you know, and, they, and he said, nobody was looking. I thought, really? <laughs> That's nothing to brag about, is it, really? <laughs> then I realized, he, he said, I've got a photo of it, and showed it to me. I'm like, oh, oh, you, oh, you, you mean your it. trousers, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a cultural yeah. difference. Yes, and he had no suspense. Anyway, ooh. Uh, uh, <laughs> so how about the yeah. <laughs> Yes, what uh, were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, how long do you envision yourself uh, doing these voices and filling these roles. Is this the rest of your career, or is there an end in sight? <laughs> there was a moment when I'd started doing them, and I was doing uh, uh, some promotional event at the British Academy of Film and whatever it is, BAFTA, um, and, uh, and a setup. We'd done it several times at different events, and obviously I get paid to turn up, and they, they, they have the Dalek there, and I'm hiding behind somewhere, and all these important dignitaries come in and go, oh, look, it's a Dalek, and the guy inside moves it around. They go, oh, right. and then someone whispers to me what the guy's name is, you know, and I go, Fred Bloggs, you will be exterminated. They'll go, oh, like this. And I remember one of the uh, people helping with the technical stuff said, oh, wow, he said, you know, you could spend the rest of your life doing events like this. <laughs> and I had a, you know, the, is, which is it? It's not on Richard Dreyfus, is it? Is in Jaws, where they do the contra zoom shot, you know, where the background goes when he said, "Yeah, that I had one of those moments." I was like, "Oh, the rest of my life." <laughs> <laughs> I do love it, but I thought, you know, it's been like a children's entertainer sort of thing. So, but no, forever, as long as they'll have me, you know. My 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 dream would be to to get some amazing role in something else. Like, yeah, there's just. I'm just going crazy and imagining stuff now, like James Bond or something, and I become James Bond, and I'm sort of massively rich, and I still go back to the BBC to be the voice of the Daleks. I'd absolutely do it, and maybe cut my fee in half just to be nice, because the BBC have got no bloody money, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm not tired of it. I, I love it. I've loved it since I was a kid, and, to, yeah, and I was always madly preoccupied with the voices as a child, and so to be doing this is a dream come true, and... You know, like most actors, I'll moan because the coffee's not on time or it's a bit cold or something like that. But then, then you pinch yourself and realize that it's a massive privilege. So I'm not, you know, they'll just have to sack me, basically. <laughs> Thank right. you. Is that all right? Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. good news. Thank you. Oh. I'm slightly moved. Yeah, yeah. I think that applause was for you. <clears throat> Alcon.